Welcome to Helicast by UND Aerospace. We're somewhere over northern Nebraska at the moment, making our way back home. And we spent a lot of time with this aircraft so far. Today we just want to give you a brief rundown on this new panel, our Garmin G500 1060 TXI. Most of us now are familiar with the older G500H, uh, which has LSKs and knobs to set your bugs and mess with your maps and that kind of thing. The biggest difference here with the 1060 TXI is that, first of all, it's a larger panel, uh, and it's also a mostly touchscreen interface. It's not all touchscreen. You can still do things like change your zoom uh, with your knobs, select your pages, with the knobs and even your bugs. So if you wanted to select my altitude bug, for example, I can select that with the big knob and then adjust my value with the small knob, uh, vertical speed, indicated airspeed, course, and our altimeter setting as well. Of course, not everybody is gonna to wanna to use knobs since it is a touchscreen interface. Uh, it might be easier just to push the value that you're going for and then you can use the knob to change that or even punch in what altitude you're trying to maintain. And then you can select out of that at any time. The other interesting thing about this is that you can select, we still have our PFD on the right and our MFD on the left, which in this case has our moving map set up. But we can also select a full screen PFD. As you can see, takes the map out of it. Uh, we still have our map down here on the GTN 750 plus our flight plan and any other functions that we may want. But now we just have a full screen uh, PFD interface which gives you a much easier readout of, for example, our VSI, uh, our altimeter, and of course our attitude, the aircraft attitude. We do not have synthetic vision enabled. In this case, as you can see, just from looking around, it's pretty flat, so it looks about the same as the terrain outside anyway. Another big difference here is with the MFD, we can go back and we can actually select some different values here. So most of us are going to want to use the map uh, as our MFD, but if you wanted to pull up, for example, your flight plan up here, you can now have your flight plan on your MFD fairly easily. Um, or your charts, if you're doing an approach, for example, uh, your charts can be on that page as well. So it becomes a little bit more of a, a multi-purpose display than on the G500. It's a little bit more user-friendly as well. The other thing that's interesting here is our HSI. Right now it's kind of in a standard HSI mode. Uh, which we're all pretty familiar with from the G500H. But if I go into the menu here, it actually gives us some interesting customization options. For example, with the HSI, I can turn on a map over the HSI, which gives me a map readout with our course line instead of a traditional OBS or CDI where it directs you left and right. This one just gives you your course line and then your course indicator up here. This is also zoomable, so you can zoom this in or out, and you can see kind of a mini version of the map here on the MFD. So here I could go into my flight plan on this page, and I still have a map here overlaid on the HSI. The only real disadvantage I see to this is that you kind of lose the bottom of your HSI uh, since it is a, a bigger display. So if you were setting your heading bug or your course or something like that, you'd have to just use the values here to figure out where exactly you're, you're setting that up. So for me, I kind of still prefer the traditional setup where I can see my whole attitude indicator here and then my map on the left. Also a little difference on the, the 1060 here, we no longer have a map to page, which we traditionally use for our instrument approaches. So if you want that map or like a, a night map or something like that, all you really got to do is go to the map menu, turn off the topo, and we get a good IFR map or a night map uh, with all your traffic overlays and everything else the same. 
And for us, we're just going to, since we're VFR right now, we'll leave the topo set up uh, with a high detail mode and our next rad radar, just in case we're flying into anything unexpected, any unexpected weather. All right, so do our attitude sync. We first have to go into the menu here, then we hit attitude sync, and then it goes ahead and syncs our attitude indicator. Uh, so instead of having an LSK for that, we just go into the menu. The clock here, it's kind of the same thing. It's touch screen, so I can go into the clock. If I want this to be the timer, um, I can go ahead and switch that to timer. Then I have my start, stop, and my reset right here. Uh, that is customizable as well, so right now it's set for this menu to time out after 60 seconds. Um, I think that's the maximum it goes is 60 seconds. Another new thing with the 1060 is that we actually do have an indicated airspeed bug, which we did not have on the G500H. So right now we're attempting to cruise at 100 knots indicated approximately. So I can set that on my bug as well as my altitude and my heading. And our CDI button is just right here. Touch screen again, so if I want to set that to VOR, I can touch it there. If I want to switch it back to GPS, I can touch it there, and it tells me we're in terminal mode. We have our traditional CDI as well as our GPS CDI up top here to show us how we're doing on our course. And my trusty co-pilot is making a correction to get back on course right now. Uh, with the map, of course, this is also all touchscreen out here, so if I wanted to move around, take a look at different waypoints, just like I can on the GTN 750, it's kind of the same interface, so I, let's say I want to know more about this airport, I can scroll over here, I can hit waypoint info, and I can figure out, okay, this is Grand Island, what are my frequencies there, what are my runways, uh, weather data from the FISB, if that's active. Uh, we could pull up all the same information that we normally would in the GTN, but now it just gives you a, a more uh, maybe easy to reach interface. Um, so you could leave perhaps your flight plan uh, down here on the GTN and then use your map up here with your touchscreen to get uh, as much information as possible out of it. Another slight difference between the 1060 and the G500H is that instead of having our waypoint information on the top of the panel. Right now it's on the bottom of the panel. So we have our waypoint information, our distance, and our time here uh, down on the bottom. So that's going to take a little bit of an adjustment, but it's very easy to use once you get used to it. Uh, you also have the same information on the top of the GTN. So as long as you can reference it in one of those two places, the information is right in front of you. We hope you've enjoyed this brief rundown on the Garmin G500 1060 TXI. Uh, we're still getting to know it. Uh, so far we really like it. It's been really easy to navigate on our way back from California to North Dakota. Uh, we still got a lot to get used to, but uh, we'll start pointing out different features as we get a little bit more familiar with it.